Ronaldo Diasis Moreira has excited fans the world over for more than a decade. As well as game style that mesmerizes defenders with its gravity-defying ball control, his electrifying skills have brought fans flocking from all over the globe to watch him play. Born in the city of Porto Alegre, Brazil, Ronaldinho's life was marred by early tragedy when his father was seized by a fatal heart attack in the family swimming pool. Ronaldinho was eight years old. His older brother Roberto, who was also a talented footballer, later signed with Gremio, and the family eventually moved with him. Ronaldinho's interest in football stemmed, like most players in Brazil, from playing games of football on the beach with friends. The love for football he developed on the beach is still joyfully apparent in his game today. Brazilian Sam Felix believes that Ronaldinho's obvious love for the game has inspired more Brazilian children to follow their dreams. Brazilian soccer is promoted because of Ronaldinho's gaucho ability, principally because of his joy in playing soccer, a freestyle soccer, attacking, the opposite of that practiced in Europe. It delights, it gives joy, happiness and gives an incentive to the children here in Brazil. Playing futsal was another stage in learning his craft. The indoor game that is played with a smaller, heavier ball in the outdoor version gave the young Ronaldinho a chance to learn more about the game. The development of his juggling skills and swift ball movement undoubtedly owe a lot to playing this form of the game. With his brother now playing at Gremio, Ronaldinho joined their youth squad and eventually made the senior side debut during the 1998 Copa Libertadores. After three seasons with Gremio, Ronaldinho signed a five-year contract with French side Paris Saint-Germain in 2001. The transfer deal was worth 5.1 million euros. In his first season with PSG, he played in a total of 34 games, scoring 11 times a good return for a young midfielder. The following season, he scored another nine goals from 31 appearances. Although his on-field form was at a career best, club manager Luis Fernandez believed that Ronaldinho was a little too focused on the Parisian nightlife. And after PSG missed qualifications for Europe, Ronaldinho was put on the transfer list. Ronaldinho's strong record at Paris Saint-Germain, along with his blistering form in the 2002 FIFA World Cup, generated a lot of interest in the young midfielder. With FC Barcelona beaten in their bid for David Beckham by Real Madrid, they were on the hunt for a replacement, as was David's old club, Manchester United. Ronaldinho became the target of a bidding war between two of the world's most successful football clubs which was eventually won by FC Barcelona for 32.25 million euros. Ronaldinho didn't waste time in repaying the club for such a big ticket transfer fee. In his first appearance for Barca, he scored in a 2-0 win against AC Milan. Although injury halted his first season campaign, he returned to see his new club finish second in the championship race. Along with teammate Samuel Eto'o, he hoped to fill the void left by the outgoing Louis Figo. Figo, who led Barca to La Liga glory in 1999-2000, had been transferred to Barcelona's major rival, Real Madrid, in one of the most controversial transfers in football history. The season of 2004-2005, Ronaldinho's second for the Spanish club, saw the Brazilian win his first league title and the club's 17th La Liga crown. To make a great year even better, he was named the FIFA World Player of the Year on December 20, 2004, beating teammate Samuel Eto. In the same year, Barcelona also won the Supercopa de España. In 2005-2006, his exciting skills once again dazzled defenders all over Spain, allowing him to set up goals for his teammates as well as score some of his own. Ronaldinho's playmaking led Barcelona to their second consecutive La Liga title as well as the Supercopa de España. However, it was their 2-1 victory over Arsenal in the Champions League final that sent Barcelona into party mode. 
After five seasons, over 200 games and 95 goals for FC Barcelona, the former FIFA World Player of the Year was off to Italy in mid-2008. Ronaldinho claimed he needed a new challenge and was keen to move to another club. That statement sparked another bidding war, this time between Italian club Milan and English Premier League's Manchester City. Ronaldinho accepted a three-year contract with the Serie A giant, worth around 6.5 million euros a season. With his famous number 10 already taken, Ronaldinho chose 80 as his new jersey number in tribute to his year of birth. Despite being injured for the majority of the season before the move, there were also questions over whether Ronaldinho's attacking game style would be effective in the very defensive Serie A. He couldn't wait to impress the Milan fans. It's a special moment in my career. All players hope to play for a club like Milan with its history. No Milan, pela grandeza do clube, por toda a história, pelos grandíssimos jogadores, por todo mundo que trabalha no Milan. It's a special emotion to arrive here and wear this shirt. It's a victory for me, and I hope to give excitement and enjoyment to the city of Milan. É uma vitória e espero poder dar muita alegria a toda a torcida do Milan. On September 28, 2008, Ronaldinho scored his first goal for Milan against Internazionale that saw Milan win 1-0. Less than two months later, he sent the Milan fans into a frenzy again as he scored the match winner against SC Braga in the UEFA Cup. The goal was scored in the 93rd minute. His first season with Milan showed promise despite their failure to win titles. Playing 35 times and scoring 10 goals, an outfit Ronaldinho was ready to remind the world how exciting football can be. With a decade of professional football behind him, he has played a total of 368 at the highest level in club football. His five-year stint at FC Barcelona marks the longest time he has spent at any one club. Ronaldinho is one of only a handful of Brazilian players to have played at every international age level. In 1997, he was part of the first Brazilian team to win the FIFA Under-17 World Championship. However, it was during his first World Cup in 2002 that he gained the world's attention. After scoring his second goal for the tournament, and ultimately the winning goal in the quarterfinal against England, he was sent off for a foul on Danny Mills. This led to him missing the semi-final. These are things that happen in football, and now I'll try to help in the best possible way, by supporting my teammates so we reach the final. With Ronaldinho out, it was left up to some crafty manoeuvres by Brazil manager Felipe Scolari to see the side through to the World Cup final. Brazilian striker Ronaldo scored the only goal of the game in the 49th minute and Brazil were through to the final. Having lost the previous World Cup to France, the pressure on the team was enormous. After a scoreless first half, Brazil scored the first in the 67th minute thanks to an error by German keeper Oliver Kahn. Brazil scored again in the 79th minute, with Ronaldo kicking his second goal. Brazil claimed their fifth World Cup, beating Germany 2-0. Brazil's World Cup success, their second in a decade, was no doubt a reason to celebrate. However, the party fizzled a little when Felipe Scolari left to manage Portugal. Carlos Alberto Parreira was given the job as the new manager. He had already led Brazil to World Cup success during a previous stint as manager in 1994. With the 2006 World Cup in his sights, he was keen to get off to a good start and dominate the group stage for qualification. Our objective is to qualify. We're going to play four games this year. It's 12 points and we're looking at scoring highly. We want to end the 2004 season in a comfortable position. So winning is the most important thing. Brazil's successful qualification in the 2006 FIFA World Cup made them favourites for the tournament. After coming through undefeated during the group stage and with the magic quartet of Ronaldinho, Adriano, Ronaldo and Kaka on the offence, it seemed as if they would successfully defend their title. Brazil was ultimately eliminated from the tournament by France in the quarter-finals, setting off a massive backlash among the fans and media. 
Pariero resigned and former Brazilian international Dunga took on the role as manager. Battling injury and form, Ronaldinho found it hard to keep his spot in the side and Dunga was more than happy to offer some advice. I think he will be as fit as the time for preparation allows, but the most important thing is that he is smiling again and is happy to be back playing. He is a player well known for his creativity, and if he is smiling and happy, his creativity will naturally flow. All this expectation in the media and among the fans is normal for all he has done and all he can still deliver. But for that to happen, the team needs to give him all the support. We cannot put all the responsibility on a single player. Everything shall happen naturally, and if he plays normally, he will be the Ronaldinho that everybody knows. Ronaldinho found some of that form when he was named in Brazil's 2008 Summer Olympic squad as an overaged player. Although his club side Barcelona initially refused to let him play, his transfer to Milan allowed him to go. With Brazil in good form, they were ultimately beaten in the semi-finals by Argentina. However, they claimed bronze after beating Belgium 3-0 in the bronze medal playoff. With another World Cup on the horizon, Ronaldinho continually struggles to cement his spot in the national team. Over his career, Ronaldinho has consistently won tournaments at an international level. In the 2005 Confederations Cup, he captained Brazil and was named the man of the match in the final against Argentina. Ronaldinho's naturally giving nature, his love of life and of course football have seen the Brazilian superstar lend his name to some worthy causes. In August 2006, he was appointed an official spokesperson for Sport for Development and Peace by the United Nations. I would like to say that I'm extremely honoured to be able to help the United Nations in its programme of sports and development. I'm very, very happy that through sports, a universal language, I can pass along everything that I've learned through my soccer experience. Soccer has given me a wonderful life, and I think it's my obligation to show the children that through sports, they can realise their dreams. In the same way, he won the Champion of Health Award from the Pan American Health Organization for his efforts to increase vaccinations and reduce violence. I have no words to express my happiness. When you're talking about such important things, to be able to help, to contribute with something, is the best thing. I feel very connected to children, so to be able to send a message about something important means a lot to me. It's the best thing in the world. In his role as spokesperson for the United Nations, Ronaldinho has toured Latin America and the Caribbean, using his status to help eliminate poverty. A year earlier, he had seen himself transformed into a comic book character. The comic, Ronaldinho Gaucho, was the work of Brazilian comic book artist Maurizio de Souza. I was always a fan of comics, and I've been reading comics since I was a kid. I think that Ronaldinho Gaucho is a character. He's extremely cartoonable, and I think that's very important. The comic book was launched by Ronaldinho in December 2005, in his hometown, Porto Alegre. Maurizio de Souza is most recognised for his comic series, Monica's Gang, and Cebolinha. D'Souza promised lots of exciting adventures for Ronaldinho Gaucho and the gang at the comic's launch. Despite his childlike love of life persona on the pitch, some critics contend that he may love life a little too much once he hangs up his boots for the night. In late 2009, he was fined by Milan for partying in Paris, and that wasn't the first time he'd been in trouble for his after-hours activities. It is rumoured that whilst at Paris Saint-Germain, Ronaldinho overindulged in the pleasures that Paris had to offer, which led to manager Luis Fernandez to put him up for transfer. 
Throughout his career, the Brazilian was believed to have been involved in a wide range of off-field antics. From hardcore partying with teammate Robinho in Rio, to claiming to be fellow Brazilian striker Ronaldo during a one-night stand. According to the Daily Telegraph, Ronaldinho has also been linked to a sex scandal that also involves model Alexandra Parasant and celebrity couple Eva Longoria and Tony Parker. If these stories are true, they could go some way towards explaining the inconsistent form that has characterised his career. Throughout his club and international career, Ronaldinho has played with and been inspired by some of the greatest sports stars the world has ever seen. Growing up in Brazil, one countryman in particular would have inspired him to follow his dream of playing football at the highest level. Pelé, who is recognised as one of the greatest players of all time, played 92 times for his country and scored 77 goals. And although he retired from international football almost four decades ago, he still holds the record for scoring the most goals for Brazil. Predominantly playing as a striker, he was most renowned for his excellent dribbling, passing, exceptional heading ability, and like Ronaldinho, his electrifying pace. With an endless list of individual honours to his name, including Footballer of the Century, Pelé's greatest feat would have to be his three World Cup victories, an achievement yet to be matched by another footballer. Although he never played football, Michael Jordan is another of Ronaldinho's idols and he got to meet the legendary basketballer in October 2006. Fresh from a 2-0 defeat at the hands of Real Madrid, the Brazilian was over the moon to meet with his childhood hero. Well, it makes me feel good that um, you know, he watched or he remembered or seen me play, that I have influenced some ways that he performed on, on, on the soccer field. It's the greatest appreciation. I take it truly to heart and, and that uh, it means a lot that I can influence someone like him even though I don't play anymore, and he's never been to one of my games. Michael Jordan retired from basketball in 2003 after claiming six NBA championships. He is regarded as one of the greatest basketballers in the history of the game. While playing for FC Barcelona, Ronaldinho got to play alongside a few of football's modern-day greats. Thierry Henry is a world-class striker who played in France's victorious World Cup side in 1998. Since joining Barcelona in 2007, he has already claimed five titles with the club, including the La Liga Championship, the Copa del Rey, Supercopa de España, and the UEFA Champions League. Young superstar Lionel Messi has also shared in Barca's recent success. The young midfielder, who has been compared to the legendary Maradona, has spent his whole career at the Spanish club. Still in his early 20s, Messi has already played 116 senior games, finding the back of the net on 60 occasions. His low centre of gravity and magnetic ball control make him almost impossible to tackle. Brazilian teammate Kaka is another player that Ronaldinho can go to for inspiration. Although he recently moved to Real Madrid, Kaka has spent the majority of his career at Italian club Milan. With the World Cup not far away, Brazil's success could be determined by Kaka's form. Ronaldinho's endless talent, goofy smile and truly beautiful game style make him a marketing dream and he's more than happy to play along. With major sponsors Pepsi and Nike paying him big bucks to endorse their products, it's no wonder Ronaldinho can't stop smiling. In February 2004, he joined other stars of the game to make a television commercial for soft drink manufacturer Pepsi. Alongside Ronaldinho, superstars like David Beckham, Raul and Fernando Torres dressed up in medieval gear and did their best to impress the locals. According to a survey conducted by consulting firm BBDO Germany, his endorsement of a product is worth over 56 million US dollars. Ronaldinho was also central to Nike's first ever product line for a football player. The Ronaldinho R10 signature line included specially designed boots, clothing and other football products. Ronaldinho explained the thinking behind the R10 name. It's a logo which reflects who I am. 
I've always worn the number 10, which was the number worn by all my idols. I've worn it from a young age. The letter R is taken from my name and reflects who I am. With four major sponsors, including Konica Minolta and EA Sports on board, it is believed that the AC Milan midfielder earns between 11 and 13 million euros a year. Combined with his estimated AC Milan salary of 7.5 million, that gives the boy from Porto Alegre a salary of around 20 million euros a year. Compared to other star footballers, he's not too far from the top in terms of earnings. Over his playing career, Ronaldinho has also taken some amazing awards. In 2002, he was presented with a great Vermilion Medal of Paris by the Mayor Bertrand Delano. The award was given in thanks for his midfield role in the Paris Saint-Germain team. Long live sport, long live Ronaldinho and long live Paris. And that's why I want to hand him, in the name of all Parisians, the great Vermilion Medal of Paris. Thanks a lot to everybody. I can't speak a lot of French, but I want to thank everybody. In 2005, he claimed the Ballon d'Or for being the European Footballer of the Year. In that same year, he also claimed the FIFA World Player of the Year Award for the second consecutive year, the UEFA Club Best Forward Award, UEFA Footballer of the Year, as well as the FIFA Pro World Player of the Year. Upon receiving the Ballon d'Or, Ronaldinho spoke about his professional and personal future. I see my future with Bartha, and I guess I will play with them for many years. I'm very happy there, and I can't imagine myself anywhere else, if not with Bartha. There are many young players who are playing very well there, and I wish them all the luck in the world. I hope that one day they will be able to take part in a gala like this. The most important people to me are my mother and my son, so if I could have them close to me now, they would be the ideal people. Ronaldinho was the 50th winner of the award, and when asked about winning the trophy, he said it was a dream come true. With still a few years left in his career, Ronaldinho has a trophy collection that any footballer would envy. Despite all the fame, fortune and associated luxuries, Ronaldinho still spends a lot of time with his family, both in Spain and his native Brazil. Although he has been accused of partying a little too hard, passion for life and football remains a great advertisement for any young player. Let's hope he can rediscover the form that saw him become the greatest player in the world.